Today or this week, we go with our lesson. A wonderful thing about the OCC on Palm Sunday is you get both a palm, a palm and a pancake. So we have our wonderful pancake breakfast today. We thank the folks that are preparing breakfast for us. Everybody's welcome to come on in and share in our meal today. Uh, the pancake donations will be going to support uh, the world. Uh, kitchen, and so we're glad to be able to offer food resources to others for our celebration day. So thank you for being with us. We do have our Easter remembrances will be published next week, so if you fill out the form for loved ones in honor of and in memory of, we'll include your loved ones in our list. 
And we have several services this week on Thursday, Holy Thursday. Uh, please come to our service here in the sanctuary at 7.30, in which we'll tell the story of the Passion and experience the Last Supper together. On Good Friday, we're doing a prayer walk this year. We'll be taking the cross uh, and walking around the building outside, if the weather permits, with seven prayers from the cross. And so we'll meet in the hall. Uh, please meet in the hall here in the piano, and we'll start our service on Good Friday. And then on Easter Sunday, we have our 6 a.m. service for those who like to rise early and greet the day. Next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we have our grand and beautiful Easter worship with great music and great exaltation. And so we're excited to offer our Easter service. So please be sure to be part of our uh, week this week and Holy Week. And we are so grateful to be together. Um, our opening worship call to worship today is our reading from Psalms, our number 118. Good morning. So this is called to pancakes, and this is a call to worship. <laughs> oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. The Lord is by our side. We shall not fear. We shall not be frightened. Open to us the gates of the Lord. Let us This is the Lord's doing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray. The light of the Lord is shining upon us. And let us sing the Lord, the Lord, all glory and honor. Yes. Yes. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, it's taking over so much time. But before that, we counted 31 people singing on Wednesday. But then Gordy, I'm sorry, then Pastor Ken told me that I had to come to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hold on. So I had 34 people. And then Gordy told me that if I put it and look at it and kind of have it reflect back to me, backwards from the mirror, it was 43. So I made my 40, right? So what do I have to do next day? Do you remember? I'm going to do Vicky Silly. Do you remember? I'm going to wear that big, big Easter bonnet on my head. It hangs in everything. I know. His face is like, right? All right. So I, I made 40. I'm sort of like, don't tell me. All right. So I'm going to wear a really creepy hat next day. You need 40. So our next number is going to be 5 zero. What is that? 50. 50. For our next, 50. For our next April, it's like fun time. Okay? All right. But before we go and talk about that, we have our songs to sing. We have a couple new songs today. So we're going to sing the ones we know first. That is on our green sheet. And then we're going to... And our yellow song today. Is that Are you ready? Are you ready? He looks alright. He's fine. He's just looking at the
join with me in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
as a continuation of the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem for the great procession, as we recall, and with our children bringing the leafy palm branches in a way to celebrate the coming of an amazing event. And later in the day, after the parade was over and the crowds had somewhat dispersed, the Gospel of Mark tells us that Jesus entered into Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, Jesus went up to Bethany to be with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us praise God and let us be in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we are thankful to gather around your word that we may invite in prayer the passages of our life that move us from where we are to where we are becoming. By faith and in your glory we pray. Amen. All around the world today, Christians are celebrating this holiday called Palm Sunday in worship, in prayer, and with special sacred activities in all kinds of cultures around the world. A glorious day to celebrate the coming of the Lord. Palm Sunday is the day of the year in which the faithful remember that Jesus has come into Jerusalem, the center of our faith. And it's a powerful moment to recall that in our own daily life, and in our own faith practices, every day we welcome Jesus into our hearts and we offer our will to follow in Jesus' way. We follow Jesus by listening to the teachings and by living a life in service to others and to be mindful of concerns and to offer dignity and care to each and every person and to encourage all souls to be loved and to know their God's beloved. Early in the day comes those crowds. Can you think of a time when you were in a crowd of people, most likely for us a concert or a sporting event or a gathering for a social action downtown? Crowds can offer a sense of support, but there also can be a great tension in a large crowd. Things can turn very quickly, and what seems orderly can turn into chaos. If certain expectations are not met, a crowd can become dangerous. Though I'm not trying to be funny, I can think of crowds at Gillette getting dangerous if expectations aren't being met. Now imagine you know, in seriousness, imagine all the pilgrims in Jesus' day making their way to Jerusalem on that day that we call Palm Sunday. The roads would have been crowded, people standing side by side, moving in one direction, carts and animals pulling more people behind. It's like a biblical traffic jam, like trying to get to Gillette Stadium before or after an event. You know, Route 1 gets shut down. But imagine in seriousness, in war zones, imagine those crowds in Ukraine two years ago, all heading to the border trying to get away from the fighting. Imagine those scenes of families being torn apart. Imagine the crowds in Gaza in these last few months, all the folks heading south trying to find safety where there is no safety, that have everyone displaced. And then this crowd is coming into Jerusalem with this great expectation expectation that finally their long-awaited Messiah has come, has come to save them. The one from the ancestor David. He will rule with authority. He will throw off the Roman occupation. He will restore peace and goodwill and prosperity to the land. And this is the promised land of their long-held covenant with God. So they took down the leafy branches and they spread them out on the road as befitting the welcome new king. People were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God save us. Blessed is the coming of our father David. God save us to the highest heavens. That is a very high expectation for someone's coming. Would Jesus be able to fulfill all of the people's dream? And then there he is. He arrives coming around the corner. 
His face is firmly set toward the future, his immediate, his immediate future, and the future of God's relationship with the world. Jesus is confident, he's calm, he's caring. And he's riding on a colt, a humble colt, not a fine horse fit for a commander of a large army. That just doesn't seem right with the picture that we have. Jesus is anointed by God to usher in a new covenant in the kingdom of God. But he appears to be more like a, a humble and wise teacher, a gentle healer. King David had come with glorious power at his disposal. So Mark tells us that later in the day, Jesus enters into Jerusalem and through the crowds, goes up to the temple and he looks around at everything. It was a prayerful pause in a wild scene. He takes it all in, and because it had grown late, Jesus goes out to Bethany with his 12 companions. Bethany was an important place for Jesus just outside of Jerusalem. It was the home to Mary and Martha and Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. It was a place of refuge, a place of rest, a place of comfort, and a place for a prayerful reflection for all the passages that would be happening in this week and the days to come. And there was a lot going to happen in those days. Even the disciples who had been learning directly from Jesus, they would not fully understand all these events unfolding so quickly. Jesus would come into the temple and overturn the tables of the money changers. And he'd start talking about how the temple itself was going to be thrown down and rebuilt in three days. And he would challenge listeners to hear of the coming of God's kingdom, which was not of this world as they knew it. There's an ancient practice when visiting the Temple Mount, which may have been in place thousands of years ago in Jesus' day. When pilgrims come, they climb up the steps of the Temple Mount to arrive at the temple, that ancient place, for prayer of the faithful. And when they get to the top, they're invited to go left or right. Those who have traveled into Jerusalem with a broken heart, they turn to the left. And the others turn to the right. And when they meet together, they are asked, what has happened to you? And then sorrows are shared at the wall. And blessings are spoken to the broken heart. And then healing takes place at the temple wall. Of sorrows for the world. In life, we are met with great moments of stress and tension and difficult choices. As a pilgrim, following in the footsteps of Jesus, we're looking for God's world to emerge in this world of ours. We're listening for God's direction in a world that seems always to be losing its direction. And so today on Palm Sunday, we stand with crowds waving leafy branches to welcome the one of God, the one who brings a saving grace, the one who brings a strong blessing to hear and receive, and the one who can bring a healing word that moves us from where we are to where we can be. Can we too follow our Lord moving from this place into God's house of love into the place of care and compassion and service in which every human child is called God's beloved. Let us be in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, on this Palm Sunday, we are thankful to be pilgrims in the crowd, waving branches to welcome you home and welcome you in. May our hearts be an abiding dwelling place for your love, care, and compassion. All your children, we pray on this promise. Amen. And let us sing our little song today, number 198. Jesus, remember.
love and service. And let us join in our sending and commissioning on Palm Sunday. Heaven has a home right here. The loveless the loveless may find love with us. For with angels we sing the song of life. This song we gladly sing all our days. Let us sing, My Song is Love, Unknown, number 192.